Okay, hi. Uh, thank you for the great introduction. Um, I've been working on offenders' behavior and decision-making for like more than seven years now, and I will continue in the future. But today, I wanted to talk about the protection of users, um, so because, uh, because we will talk about passwords. Um, so password best practices imply that you, uh, that, yeah, that, that the password is impossible to remember and that it is never written down. So uh, the idea of protection behind passwords is an excellent idea. But um, like every technology, it's come with consequences. And this solution seems to have been made more for computers than for humans because it's impossible for a human to just remember a list of 100 passwords with strings of uh, random characters. So, I know that today we have solutions like, uh, uh, like uh, password managers, but most people don't use that yet. And this, we still need passwords to, uh, to use this, so. Um, studies show that there is a difference in cybersecurity knowledge or literacy um, across the country. So there, there is a difference between uh, the level of, uh, of knowledge across the country, and this is what I wanted to uh, explore in this research project. Uh, each year, the company NordPass release uh, a list of the 200 most common passwords by countries. Uh, the list of passwords is a, a compilation of, uh, of cybersecurity incidents that happen in a year, and um, it comes from, of course, data breaches, uh, so containing users' passwords. And um, the list is compiled, is, is created from four terabytes of information, so a lot of data breaches. And uh, it includes, well, this year, I don't know if it's the case for each year, but uh, this year, 49 countries. So here is uh, some more information about uh, the, the list, the, the data that I use for, uh, for this research. So um, the 200 most common passwords for each country comprises between 169,000 and 146 million users per country. This means that uh, in some countries there is 146 million people who use the 200 same passwords. But it also means that in other countries there is a lot less people using the same 200 passwords and that is very good for them. Uh, here, the list contains the most common passwords, not necessarily the worst password. Okay? So the, to determine how good is a password, you can observe the cracking time. So when an attacker robs a list of username and passwords, uh, the information is usually encrypted. Um, and time to crack will, will be the time it takes to, uh, to decrypt the information. Okay. So the average time to crack password is, uh, for if in this sample, is more than two million seconds. So it ranges from zero to, uh, to three billion seconds. And here the mean time to crack is not a very good measure to understand the sample because uh, it's very high and it's like everyone is very good at, uh, at creating password, but it's not the case. Um, the vast majority of password included in the list can be cracked in less than a minute. So the fact that the mean time to crack password uh, is high uh, is, is uh, it's because there, there is some pretty good password in those 200 most common passwords. Um, so a much more representative measure would be uh, the median more than the mean. So uh, which is uh, if you um, order a number as like ascending numbers, uh, to uh, with the cracking time, you, uh, um, yeah, so right in the middle, <laughs> the median is like right in the middle, you have the two second. That means that most people use like passwords that can be cracked in less than two seconds. Um, this leads to wonder which countries are the best and the worst in terms of password performance. Uh, I base this calculation on the mean time to crack, the maximum time to crack present in the list, the number of users sharing the same password, and the percentage of password that can be cracked in less than a minute. 
So here is the list of the best country. Um, to be in this list, the country has to be the best uh, in two, two, three criteria that I just mentioned. Um, the country with the little stars uh, indicate that, uh, yes, they were the best in two, two, three criteria, but they were also come up, they also come up at, as uh, the worst, in the top 10 worst for one criteria. Okay, so they are not so good. Canada, for example, uh, we are among the best for the maximum time to crack and for the mean time to crack. Nevertheless, uh, we are among the worst concerning the number of passwords that can be cracked in less than a minute. So this means that most people choose weak passwords, uh, but a larger number of people, uh, when compared with other countries, have better password habit uh, because they use stronger passwords. Here is the list of the worst country in terms of password <laughs> performance, of course. Um, so same thing here, to be in this list, you have to be the worst in two to four criteria that I presented. Um, and if there's a little star, it's a little bit more positive here. Uh, so uh, it indicates that, that this country also came out in the top 10 best for one criteria. Okay? So let's take the United States as an example. Um, so they are the worst in all categories, except for the mean time to crack. It means that some people have very, very strong passwords and it increases the mean for the country. Uh, so in the United States, some people have better password hygiene. We can conclude that. So why do countries do not have the same performance level in terms of, um, uh, of password choice? <laughs> um, Le, so this leads to the hypothesis that a characteristic of the countries contribute to the overall performance of, uh, of password strength. So in other words, which macro social variable predict the overall performance of a population in terms of password strength? That was my research question. So here is how I proceeded um, to answer this question. So in order to account for the strength of password, I took into consideration the mean time to crack. Um, remember I said the mean time to crack was not a good criteria to, uh, to understand the, the sample earlier, I said that, but now, because we want to measure, uh, the we want to compare the countries overall, now it's a very interesting measure to see, to look at. Um, and then, uh, several macro uh, social variables have been considered uh, to create a model explaining or predicting password strength. This was the, the goal of all this. Uh, so a total of 29 different measures have been considered in the exploration of possible models. Of course, the, the, the model do not contain uh, those 29 variables, but here they are. Um, so I, I try all that, I look at all that, here is the, the list I've been testing. So the list are uh, the most recent data available coming from uh, official sources like World Bank, for example. Um, so this was too many variables to possibly enter in a model, of course. So uh, many tests have been done to, for selecting those uh, that would form the model, the, the final prediction model. So uh, one example of a test that I've done before Try, uh, starting to create the model is a matrix of correlation. So variable that correlates two i together would create a problem of multicollinearity uh, uh, for our prediction model. So it, we need to avoid that. So for example, um, here the number of internet user was highly correlated with the level of digital adoption in a country. That makes sense, right? Uh, so it would have been an error to put those two variables in the model. So we had to uh, take one off. Uh, same thing here, political stability is correlated strongly with uh, regulatory quality, uh, but also with uh, control and corruption and with governance effectiveness and with a bunch of other variables. So it is an example of a variable that uh, is not interesting to put in the model. Okay, so you're following me. Uh, this helped me to select and try uh, the different variable from the list. Then I use a multiple uh, linear regression to build a model of prediction of password strength. So I try a dozen different models um, to finally identify the variable that uh, were in fact predicting password strength. So after many tests, I kept six variables um, from the list I previously, previously showed you. So uh, here I present them to you. Okay? So first, voice and accountability. <clears throat> 
this is one of the six components of governance uh, indicator as uh, stipulated by the World Bank. So it reflects the perception of the extent to which a country citizen are able to participate in selecting their government, as well as freedom of expression, freedom as of association, and freedom of press. That means, in other words, that uh, it, cal it gives an idea of the overall liberty of the population. Okay? So let's see if this have um, a link with the password strength. Then there's the, the Global Security Index, which is a trusted reference that measures the commitment of countries in, uh, in the investment in cybersecurity. Okay. Um, so do countries invest in cybersecurity, and is this having an impact on password strength? And then digital skills uh, was my third variable. It represents the extent to which uh, the active population possess sufficient digital skills. And this includes computer skills, basic coding, uh, digital readings, so or a bunch of, of, of things. Cybersecurity Exposure Index, um, it's, it's based on data collected publicly uh, available, uh, on publicly available source, like on the dark web, on the deep web, on data breaches. Uh, so based on that, we want to, to calculate the exposure of a country. So how many attacks did they suffer uh, in a year? Then the literacy. The level of literacy among a population measures the, the percentage of adults in the population um, who are able to read in, and, and write in their own language. So uh, a higher lit literacy rate is an indication of higher uh, standard of education. So this was an interesting variable to put in the model. Finally, we tested the GDP per capita, so the gross domestic product. Um, a population, uh, it, it is a standard measures of uh, the value added created through the production of goods and services in a country during a certain period of time. As such, um, it also measures the income earned from that production or the total amount spent on final goods and services. Uh, so it is a variable that is strongly associated with uh, all kinds of aspects of technologies uh, in, in country. So that's what we see in the literature. So it made a lot of sense to include that in the model to see if it also correlates with password strength. So here is the result. I didn't put the boring uh, table that goes with it. So, um, so the, the, four, the first four uh, variable were predicting password behavior. So when it increases, password strength also increase. Um, and the two last did not predict password strength. Okay? And so uh, let's explore each of, uh, each of those. So the popularity. Uh, or the spread of internet in a country have been associated by researchers with a, gravel, a greater level of, um, of voice and accountability, which means the liberty of a population. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a strong positive association has been shown between security capacity and voice and accountability in the literature. Uh, so this goes along with the result of our study uh, because it was correlated with uh, with a it, it was a good predictor of uh, of password strength. Researchers have shown that uh, a higher cybersecurity is related to a lower similarity between passwords inside the population, um, and therefore better habits of selecting passwords. So this confirm uh, to confirm uh, this this section of the literature, we use the Global Cybersecurity Index, which measured the commitment and the investments of the countries. And uh, we found that countries' investment in cybersecurity predict stronger passwords. Uh, so yes, investments in cybersecurity pays. <clears throat> the results show that the number of cybersecurity incidents in a country is positively associated with password strength. Uh, so the more a country is under attack, and the more, uh, the more people use strong password. So that's very interesting, because this suggests that people are sensible to the importance of protecting data with strong password when they are exposed to more cybersecurity incidents. The literature have uh, documented that users are well aware of uh, the meaning of a data breach. Uh, they are, we have uh, seen in the past that when a company will uh, flag or, or uh, indicate or notify a data breach, uh, people like the, the market will, uh, will go negatively for, for them, uh, will go down for them. And um, 
we also see that uh, after a data breach, most people in a, in a study, they, they were saying um, as much as 75% uh, of people would change their password or switch the account. So people know that uh, data breach is bad and they know that they have to modify their behavior and they seem to be doing it. And this, uh, this goes along with all this literature too. Literacy is an important uh, aspect to consider uh, from my sp perspective in this study as it is directly connected to the use of technologies, okay? To seek, evaluate, use information found on the internet, readers uh, must navigate through their reading process. Uh, if not, it's too complicated. Um, so because being knowledgeable is closely related to the capacity to acquire knowledge, and that means knowing how to read, um, it was a, uh, uh, like people with low level of, uh, of literacy would have a lot of uh, problem to adapt okay, to, uh, and, and to learn. So um, it is not surprising the result uh, is therefore um, when the level of literacy of a population increases, the strength of password increases too. Okay? It makes a lot of sense. And then these two variables in the model were not predicting password strength, but I choose to show them to you because it was really interesting too because we were uh, we thought that it would uh, it would correlate. Um, so digital skills have been defined as the ability to use various digital technology or application. Um, digital skills have been shown to impact a variety of online behavior. However, our study points toward the fact that the digital skills is not a synonym of efficient use of protection. Okay, so it. We thought that uh, it would go along, but it's not, a, it's not a good indicator. I also tested the GDP, and you might wonder why, but the adoption of technology in a country have been proven to be impacted by many factors, including the economic growth of a population. So um, underdeveloped and developing countries have inferior infrastructure, uh, less effective manpower, and the, their business model did not, uh, uh, did not yet shift between the industrial age to the information age. So um, this result might be, a, a, sorry, I, the result of, a, of, a, of the study uh, indicate that wealth disparity does not influence strong password. Okay? And this result might be explained by the sector in which a developed country invests. Also, past study have uh, shown that uh, countries need to acquire experience with IT before their investments start to pay. Okay. So, if I want to summarize all this, it, uh, there is this result say that benefiting from from resources is not enough alone to explain uh, or, or to be effective in for the use of technology and protection. So in this presentation, I, it's my last slide. In this presentation, we looked at the factor that most influence password strain, um, which offer new knowledge about passwords habit in various developed and developing country setting. Uh, the big conclusion is that yes, the environment of user is affecting their behavior and their choice of passwords. Um, we, the result points out the importance of a country's investment in cybersecurity. It also uh, shows that democracies help users to do better choice for password protection. Um, this is probably due to, uh, to the access of information. Um, also, there's a, a, a new hot subject in cybersecurity, and you might have uh, heard of. We talk a lot about resistance, uh, resilience. Sorry, uh, about resilience of users. Uh, it's a new hot topic, and this is one of the conclusion of this study too. Uh, users are resilient. We know that because the population that are victim of higher at, uh, level of, uh, of uh, data breaches uh, will do better uh, at, at choosing passwords. And finally, the general education presented through the level of literacy is a better indicator of password strain than, uh, than specific digital skills. So user habit in, a re in relation uh, to cybersecurity is frequently examined from a micro perspective, uh, using, for example, survey results to obtain impactful factors uh, 
um, that uh, that influence individual um, decision making. Uh, but uh, our research uh, differs by focusing on country-specific factors, and those factors help determine users' vul vulnerabilities at a macro level and might be useful for policy around cybersecurity. So that's it. Thank you.